Alright, heading 185, reduce speed 182 and off. 185 on the heading 180 on speed off air 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 and off to 40 MA. 160 to 40, speed 121. Hello there guys, Matt here, and welcome to not really another flight sim video, although there are parts of flight sim included, but a kind of tutorial video on how best to tweak your FSX for the FS Labs A320X, which for you guys, if you were an early adopter, was released, uh, I think, last week. And for the people that didn't quite make that, uh, now can buy it uh, at its full price. The, uh, the RTM version is now available for you to purchase. Now, in the videos that I put out uh, last week, um, there are a few people that mentioned that performance was uh, a problem for me, and because it was exported from a Twitch live stream, you actually only saw the footage at 30 FPS. But for me, the, the FPS has always been much higher, and we're talking anywhere between the sort of 50s, jumping as high as 70, 80, 90, sometimes even 100, depending on the scenario. Um, and of course, that doesn't relay into a 30 FPS live stream. So I figured I'd chuck Shadow Play on, which pretty much gives me the true FPS and uh, we jump in the bus and I'd show you around it and just let you see for yourself that 60 FPS fluidity is possible in FSX Steam Edition uh, and FSX Boxed Edition uh, if you just follow some simple steps. I will throw a disclaimer on this whole thing though. Um, you're not going to be able to run this at max settings. It, it's not possible. Uh, I've tried and I failed. I, I can probably get anywhere between sort of 25 and 30 FPS if everything is on max and I am not at a place, for example, Heathrow uh, or Seattle or somewhere else like that, that um, really does hit hard on the frame rate. So the moment we're in uh, Dubrovnik in Croatia, and all of the newer titles seem to be extremely well optimized for performance, so you don't really have the issue of running into uh, a bad FPS and, and running out of memory, VAS, whatever else you want to call it. Um, it, it just seems to work, which is uh, is most welcome. I'm running FSX Steam Edition uh, because I lost the boxed edition a very long time ago, uh, so all of the tweaks that you see today will be based around FSX Steam edition but you can pretty much use these in the boxed edition if you have that uh, and, and it really doesn't matter whether you have service pack one service pack two acceleration pack or whatever uh, it's just a basic set of tweaks which should get you flying this bus uh, in, in the in the best fluidity possible if that even makes sense so, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into it, and it's not going to be a long video, it's just a few steps that I take to ensure that uh, you get the most performance out of your sim. Okay, let's start with the DirectX 10 Scenery Fixer. I am using version 2.11 at the moment. I do believe there is 2.13 is available. I'll leave the link in the uh, the description of where you can buy it. It was originally available on the Flight Sim Store website, but the guy that made it took it off there and now has it hosted on his own site somewhere. So if you, uh, you want to get that, then I'll leave you the link in the description. I'm not going to give you a DirectX 9 tweak guide for FSX because there really is no point in using DirectX 9. Especially now we have this fixer, you really should all be using DirectX 10, especially as DirectX 10 gives you so much more as far as aesthetics and also as far as memory as well. It's uh, especially for complex aircraft such as the FS Labs A320, the memory footprint using DirectX 10 is significantly less than if you're using DirectX 9. So. It's relatively straightforward. When you install it, you'll be presented with a screen like so. Uh, you need to make sure that the FSX path is correct, which it should be. That's where mine resides. It's a Steam version. You need to make sure you install the libraries. There would be an install button here had it not been installed. And then you need to make the switch to DirectX 10, which mine is already there. Once you've done that, the rest I can do for you, and that is in the form of a profile. I will leave the link in the description to the profile you need, and it's really simple. You just go to Profiles, then Load Profiles, and then you are looking for a DFP file, which I don't have at the moment because I deleted it, but it's on my Dropbox, and I will link you to the, uh, the DFP file. Once you've imported it, it will do everything for you, and you're pretty much ready to go. You can look through all of the options if you wish. I mean, I'm not gonna go through them, we'll be here all day. Uh, you can tweak them to your fancy, but these have come straight from the FS Labs forum, from the bit, uh, from the beta testers that have been tweaking their systems to make the Airbus run at its most optimum. So there you go, DirectX 10 Scenery Fixer done. Okay, so for the display settings with an FSX, uh, 
as you can see i'm running a 1080 target frame rate is unlimited and uh, it's locked via in the nvidia inspector filtering is trilinear anti-aliasing is ticked we're using DirectX 10 global resolution is not all the way to the top but just a little bit below uh we're using advanced animations no light bloom no lens flare informational text is continuous and then the aircraft tab a 3d uh, virtual cockpit high resolution 3d virtual cockpit you don't want to show cockpit tooltips 2d transparency well you really should keep that on zero regardless of whether you're using 2d panels or not um removing shadows and uh fr from itself and also everything else is a good thing that's a really hard hitter when it comes to performance and it can also cause problems with ai traffic being invisible uh, and of course aircraft landing lights illuminate the ground is something you want although i think the landing lights in the airbus are custom so it Probably wouldn't make much difference if that's ticked or not. Uh, scenery tab, you can see that everything is, is toned right the way down. Again, they can't run this at max. It's it's not possible. So level of detail radius large. Uh, mesh complexity 75. Mesh resolution is 10. Texture res is 1 m or meter whatever you want to call it uh, water effects high and uh, scenery complexity is normal autogen density is sparse we don't want ground scenery to cast shadows and of course special effects detail goes uh, goes all the way up to high um so as far as weather goes cloud draw distance 90 mi thermal visualization non detailed clouds with maximum coverage and uh, we want to disable the turbulence and thermal effects on aircraft even that we're not using the inbuilt weather engine traffic settings well airline traffic density is zero uh, general aviation traffic density is also zero basically we've just turned off the traffic because i fly on that sim and uh, sometimes pilot edge sometimes ivao and i want to use the uh, actual online models not the default ones that would come with ai land and sea vehicles well in p3d you would notice that i'd have this turned up but not in fsx because it's a performance killer and i don't have the labels on because that's not that realistic okay one tip for the uh the steam edition users of flight sim uh, a performance tip that was given to me via left terrace and it actually makes a difference steam has this uh, overlay that works with any steam game that you launch um so if you go to which well this is metro steam because i know people are going to ask if you literally google metro steam that's the steam skin i use uh, and in the top left or whichever version you're using you can then go into the uh, the settings and you want to go to settings and then you want to go to in game and you want to disable the steam overlay whilst in game having anything that overlays fsx is a bad idea even as far as the auto text that comes up in the top you can actually disable that if you use fsci pc uh, but make sure the overlay whilst in game is switched off okay let's talk about the config the fsx config i'll leave the link to my config in the uh in the description below but it's just an accumulation of tweaks that i found on the fs labs forum from the beta testers and also things that i've used in the past i've not used as many things in this config as i used to use in my old setup because i just have a better system a more powerful system so i can get away with it a little bit more uh, but the, the biggest tweaks are always at the top of the config i don't know if this is actually you know an, a legitimate thing if you put the tweaks at the top they guess give you better performance i don't know but they're there anyway so pool size is is zero we're not using buffer pools at all um and that means that the the gpu will take the brunt of the load of uh, of rendering whichever things it renders um job scheduler affinity mask is 84 and the reason why that is if you go to your task manager and then go to performance and then you can see here i have a 6700k at 4 gigahertz it's actually at 4.6 at the moment or 4.56 and uh, if you right click and change graph to logical processors you'll see uh, logical processors i thought i said processors then uh, you'll see how many you have so i have eight at the moment you can see here uh, and that corresponds to the number that is uh, set with your affinity mask so 84 is 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 for hyper threaded uh, i7s that have eight cores essentially uh, when when hyper threading is turned on there is uh, i'll leave a link to a thread in which you can match your cpu to the number that this requires again this is not really a thing that's needed in p3d i don't use it um so it's only it's only a thing that's prominent in fsx i don't even know why i'm making this video because once the fs labs <laughs> comes out for p3d i'm deleting fsx but i guess some of you'll find it useful um directx 10 uh again we went through the directx 10 settings so 
this will be set automatically. Uh, texture max load, uh, if you run the FS Labs installer, it will try to set it at four, uh, 4096 unless you tell it not to. I set it at 2048, you don't need 4K, it's it's overkill. Some people like it for like pretty screenshots and seeing crazy detail. I'd rather not run out of memory. Um, high memfix, if you're uh, using FS Steam Edition, then uh, it basically already comes with it. But if you're not, just stick it in there for good measure. It's under the graphics section. Um, Multi-sample pixels, whatever it's called, these two are, are directly correlate to the DirectX 10 config uh, tweaker thing, so just leave that as is. Uh, and then sc scrolling through everything, I don't really see anything different. Uh, I, the texture bandwidth mult for me is set at 160. You're basically free to play around with that. It starts at 80 and can go basically as high as you need it to, but it has to go in stages of 5, so you couldn't put 161, for example. 160 seems to work for me. Frame rate limiter is at 0 because, again, we set that in NVIDIA Inspector. Uh, we'll pretend you didn't see that so I don't get sued again. And uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, yeah, the, the menu stuff. You can hide it if you want. That's fine. Um, and the rest of it is just default, really. I don't know if I changed the uh, the LOD radius. Maybe I did. No, LOD radius is at 4.5. So everything is still there that is there in a default config. There's just a few minor tweaks. Um, and hopefully uh, this will help you somewhat in your performance. Okay, so welcome to the latest NVIDIA Inspector. If you're an AMD user, well, you're an AMD user, and there is really not much hope for anybody. Um, they've changed the names of things in, uh, in the NVIDIA Inspector for some reason. It's no longer called Microsoft Flight Simulator X. It's now called Microsoft... Uh, Flight Simulator 10. <laughs> As you can see, I've already got something imported here. I'm not going to go through all the settings because I really can't be bothered, but what I am going to do is going to link you to a file which you can download and you can import. And the way you do it is you... Uh this button here, import user defined profiles. Uh, click the arrow at the side and then import profiles and you'll, well this is where mine uh, resides in my PC documents inspector. Um, and then you wanna imp import the directx10.nip. When you do that, it will fill out all of these fields for you and you can apply changes. One thing that I have done is turn the frame rate limiter off just so I can show you how to do it in this version. I lock my frames at 60 because it doesn't seem to matter what I lock them at. If I lock them at 30, I get this horrific stutter, even though it's at 30. But if I lock it at 60, it's quite smooth. So I just find 60.7 and I press apply changes and then everything is applied. And to just check that it's actually going to affect the EX see that is responsible for flight sim if you click um, here like this and then you'll see that ace.exe and fsx.exe is going to be affected when it's triggered and that is exactly the exe which is run when you run either fsx steam edition or fsx boxed edition so that's pretty much it Okay, so just to end this video, I know there will be a lot of people that will be complaining about the fact that there's no DirectX 9 tweak guide and that you can't run the FS Labs A320X at max settings with good performance and yada, yada, yada. But what you have to remember is that this aircraft is one hell of a complex aircraft. If you watch my developer interview with Andrew Wilson, one of the developers over at FS Labs, you'll note him say that there are over 80 computer systems all running simultaneously with something crazy like 2,000 events being triggered at any one time. That is a lot of processing power for a 32-bit environment. Like, how that's even been possible is beyond me. There is a reason why developers in general that tackle the Airbus do it in a dubbed-down way because it's just simply far too complex. Speaking of other developers, I have noticed that there has been... I don't even know what the word is. You all seem to be bashing other developers, and I, I don't really quite understand it. I made a joke on Twitter last week where uh, I posted a, a kind of animated video, kind of gif, gif, however you want to pronounce it, on Twitter of, of me uninstalling the Airbus. And, I, I mean, it was a joke, okay? The Airbus is still installed. Um, I can show you right now, actually, if I go to all programs, and then you'll see it's there. I didn't actually uninstall it. It was just a bit of a giggle. It was a bit of observational humor. You can all calm down. But what really isn't cool is, is number one, actually, uh, forget, forget you guys or forget some of you guys. Most of you are okay. But is the actual developers themselves seem to be having arguments with each other, which is kind of weird. Um, and then 
you guys chip in, and then just before you know it, it's just a battle of who's better. At the end of the day, every single Airbus, apart from Black Box, has their own market. Um, the Aerosoft, as as they have stated a million and one times, is a captain's only simulation, left hand seat, and it is designed to get to you from A to B in the best way possible. And we have had a ton of fun with it since it was released. I've made plenty of videos, plenty of live streams, and it has served its purpose. Now the FS Labs. A320 is in a league of its own and by that I mean it is the most complex simulation of an aircraft that exists. There is no questioning that. With that comes its own market. So if you are trying to compare something like the Aerosoft and the FS Labs then you're doing it wrong guys, you really are. They're, they're incomparable, they're completely separate aircraft. Some people are saying, oh well the FS Labs looks worse than the Airbus, or the Airbus does this better than the FS Labs, yada yada, it, it, makes, no, it makes no difference. They are completely incomparable products. And I would give black box simulations the time of day, but they seem to be very good at digging themselves a rather large hole that they can't crawl out of. So I kind of sidelined them probably about half a year ago. You can make your own judgments. I'm just asking you before you start bashing other developers and, and commenting and, you know, saying this, that and the other, make sure it's justified. Like I have no problem with open speech, you know, freedom of speech or whatever you want to call it. Uh, especially when, you know, for example, the whole black box thing, they have publicly destroyed themselves. That is no secret. But Aerosoft and FS Labs, you know, that they're not out to kill each other. They're not out to say one company is better than the other. They build two completely different products and it is what it is. So if you can't see that for uh, for what it is, then get out more, as I said to somebody yesterday. And then they turned around and said, oh, it's funny, you should be talking about getting out more. So then they got banned. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. And if you'd like to see any more tutorials on anything specific, then please do let me know. Because as uh, I said in a few videos ago, kind of changing the flow of this channel a bit. I'm going to do some more informative type videos, some more uh, some more tutorials, some more reviews, and uh, a little bit less of the kind of hands-on flying from A to B. Okay, until the next video, I bid you all farewell. Thanks for the support and take care.